Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we are extremely privileged and honoured indeed to welcome two amazing guests to the Lacquer Store in Manchester, in this glorious city where I was a student back in the late 80s. I've never been this sober on a Friday night <laughs> my entire time in Manchester. While it's sadly true that many men have been quick to start wars, it's a sad truth that very few men or women have had the courage to claim they had a hand in ending wars. Ladies and gentlemen, we are deeply honoured tonight by the presence of two such people, Nick Ertz and Kim Fook. For the tide of the Vietnam War and the course of human history began to be turned on the day of June the 8th, 1972, when the US Air Force dropped its napalm bombs on the village of Trang Bang, a place Kim, then aged only nine, called home. When Nick Ertz captured the moment in time, it went on to become the second most recognized image of the 20th century. Called the terror of war, this iconic image deservedly won the 1973 Pulitzer Prize for Spot News Photography, the very highest accolade is possible to bestow upon an act of photojournalism. But of course, we're all here tonight because the war on terror was so much more than simply a photograph. This photograph not only saved Kim's life, but perhaps countless others too, as it helped to halt the path of the Vietnam War. When this image was published in the United States of America on June the 12th, 1972, the world was exposed for the first time to the true horror of the war in Vietnam. The photo rocked America to its very foundations and it sent shockwaves to the top of the country, to the White House itself. Sensing that his campaign of propaganda that the Vietnam War was a good and just and deserved war was slipping from his grip, ruling President Nixon called the image a fix. That's a quote. He said it's a fix. Others, however, called it the decisive moment in the Vietnam War. And quickly, an uprising of hearts and minds ensued, and America began to question its role in this grotesque war. From the comfort of our armchairs, we hear much about the abstract and dehumanized concept of collateral damage in wars. Truly few have witnessed it firsthand, like our two extraordinary guests tonight. As a journalist of 20 years myself, I've been fascinated and inspired by this image for most of my life, even though I was barely two years old when it was taken. Nick comes from a long and noble bloodline of war documenters who shun propaganda and have the bloody guts to bring us the truth, no matter how uncomfortable that truth may be. From the first war, World War poetry of Wilfred Owen that portrayed the true misery of life in the trenches of the Great War, it was a bitter irony that one of the greatest documenters of human tragedy of all time was killed in its final days lest we forget the great war painters whose works are still displayed in the Imperial War Museum, I would urge anybody to go and see them. They shattered the landscapes and they were censored at home. They told the truth at a time when governments didn't want the truth to be known. The painters were called treason. Next there was Keith Douglas, the World War II poet I urge you to check out his work. He wrote a poem called Vergess Me Nicht, which is a poem about a dead Nazi he found underneath a melted gun. And he found the poem of his sweetheart in his inside pocket. And it showed truly that the Nazis were people like us too, who shared the same terrors and prayed to the same God at night. With each flash of their pen, stroke of their brush, or the click of their shutters. These brave voices 
help to shine a light on the darkest recesses of the human condition. But by challenging propaganda and refusing to ignore or even or romanticize debauchery, war photography truly elevated the act of truth-telling to its finest art. And in having that courage and conviction, these men, including Nick, helps to change the world and make it a better place. Of course, tonight is not just about Nick. Kim used this tragedy that was inflicted upon her that day in 1972 to inspiring effect. And to this day, she works as a peace envoy to the United Nations. God knows she's got every reason to be angry, right, at the world and what happened to her that day. Instead, she chose a different path, the noble path, a sentiment we could all learn from, the route towards peace, and greatest of all, the act of forgiveness. This is especially pertinent to the time when war still rages on earth, that we have the power of human forgiveness, and whenever we have that, there is hope. Now I'd like to introduce our guests, please, if they can come to the stage. Please, a round, wall, a round of applause and a warm welcome for Nick Ert, Kim Fook. Welcome. Welcome.